Fasten your seatbelts. It's time for the Mega 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 Mini Review Roundup. That was a lot for no reason. Hello, Champagne Dreamers. Welcome back to my channel. I'm your girl, Miss J, the trash queen of glam, geek, and gore. And for this video, I should know not to try to commit to like a regular monthly series because I'm too unpredictable. Things come up. And so some of you may have recalled that starting at the beginning of the year in January, I decided to have a monthly review roundup where at the end of each month, I tell you about all the products that I reviewed on JanessaJ.com for the month, and then tell you the worst product that I tried, as well as the top three best products that I tried. And we did really good through April. <laughs> and then I just, I'm not gonna give you all the excuses. You know, there's work stuff, life stuff, health stuff coming up. I don't wanna be one of those YouTubers who like, takes a break and stops making videos, and then they only come back to tell you why they're not making videos. I, as a viewer, that annoys the shit out of me. Just come back when you're ready to make a video and just make a video. So I'm not gonna give you all of that. Just I appreciate anybody who's reached out and just know I'm doing fine and I'm ready to be back at it. But I did miss four months of review roundup. So we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna do the mega, mega, mega mini review roundup where I'm gonna give you an overview of all of the things that I reviewed in May, June, July, and August. And once again, for each month, I will tell you what my least favorite product and my top three products were for the month. I like having this just cause it's gonna be a good reference when I get to the end of the year. And I went on a and I want to start handing out awards for the best beauty of 2021. And I just think it's fun. If you want to see what's on there, if you want to get a little preview before you head on over to JanessaJ.com and see what I've got reviewed, I think these are fun. So I hope you like it. Let me know down in the comments below what you appreciate about this video. If there's anything that you changed, if you only want it when it's month to month, um, if you would have preferred that I gave you still, even now in September, gave you May, June, July, August as separate videos. Let me know that. I would love to hear all your thoughts because chances are this shit's gonna happen again. That's just the way that I roll. I try to commit, but I am all over the place. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an interesting, erratic character. So we are gonna go ahead and get into that right now. So let's start by going back all the way to May of 2021 and talk about what I reviewed on the Makeup Mondays in May. That's a lot of M's. And speaking of a lot of M's, on May 3rd, I did a review of the Feet on the Ground palette from M -m 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 Mitchell. Lots of M's are appropriate here. So I reviewed the Feet on the Ground palette, and I also reviewed a selection of products, a couple of eyeshadow palettes, as well as some powder and concealer from Kimchi Chic Beauty. Those are both uh, those are both queer beauty influencers, performers, and I generally liked the products that I tried. I really did like the Momomo Mitchell palette. I would definitely try the other palette. I'm interested to see if he comes out with more. It's been kind of a hot minute without any releases so hopefully as the pandemic maybe starts to slow down a little bit if he can get stuff out again that would be great i would love to see new products and the kimchi i only got through half of all the stuff that i bought to review will part two ever happen who knows this is my life people this is my life maybe the blushes and the bronzer will just be the things that never get reviewed. I don't know. But the things that I tried, I generally liked. The little nine pan palettes were fine. Um, I really did like the concealer, except I hated the packaging. So definitely check out that review if you want to see why. And the powder has become one of my favorite powders, the Puff Puff Pass powder. Um, I have it in the translucent and I definitely want to try it in Ivander, which is a mixture of ivory and lavender. Because I've tried a couple lavender powders and sometimes the lavender is too aggressive for me. So having it mix the lavender and ivory, I think could be really beautiful. So that's definitely something I wanna try on the horizon. Then on May 10th, I had a couple of indie brand releases that I tried. The Menagerie Cosmetics Arthurine Blush Palette, as well as the Flight Club, the purple 
Fruit Bat palette. And that review, let me tell you, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Because that eyeshadow palette is stunning. And that blush palette was a goddamn mess. And I felt so bad because I have been on such a blush journey. You can check out more of my blush journey up here if you haven't watched it yet. But I love blush and the colors in there are so interesting and unique. And I just struggled and had such a hard time with it. I've been trying to play with it more, but it just is not a formula that works well with whatever I'm doing on this big old fucking clown face. So I really was disappointed. But the Flight Club palette, beautiful. Those purples are some of the best shades that Menagerie Cosmetics has done. And I love their eyeshadow. I generally think their eyeshadow is good. And they have like a blue-green palette, the Whale Song palette. And even with my love of greens, I think the purples in that palette might be the best yet. So good. The other thing that I reviewed on May 10th was the Natasha Denona Trio Chrome palette. I am so late to the party, and obviously we're still talking about it now in September, so I just keep showing up after my welcome has expired. But I decided, I paid a lot of money for that. I got it on sale, but I still paid a lot of money for it. So I was like, I'm gonna do a review. I don't care if it's not hot, it's not new. I never feel bad about reviewing old products. And with the Trio Chrome, I felt the same way that I feel about like everything from Natasha Denona, which is that if it were like a third of the price, I would just be like, this is great makeup. But because of how much it is, I'm like, this is it? Like, this is it? This is it? This is all? I just, there should be more pigment. The multi-chromes, the trio chromes, whatever you want to call them, they should have more impact. For $125, and in that palette, you only got three of the trio chromes? Come on now. Miss Danona. Ma'am. Stop it. Stop it. I am so glad that bigger brands are getting into trio chromes and multi chromes and duo chromes and things like that. That's great, but do it well, especially if you're at that luxury price point. Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona, you gotta do it well because there are so many competitors on the market who are blowing you the fuck out of the water. On May 17th, I had a couple of really fantabulous indie makeup releases. The first one was the Trixie Cosmetics Bottle Blonde Collection, which was a little 12 pan eyeshadow palette in pinks and purples and neutrals. Loved it, so pretty, as well as some glosses. I am loving the Trixie glosses, but Trixie, when are more lipsticks coming? Where is Bobble? You have been promising the restock of Bobble for a long time. And I know that because every time I make a video where I mention your name, I bring up the fact that you still have not fucking restocked Bobble. I hope you can feel my rage and frustration wherever you are. Restock Bobble. But the Bottle Blonde Collection is beautiful. It was really great. It was their first full-size eyeshadow palette. They did do a small mini palette, the Daytime Realness, which was blues and grays, which was fun. It was playful, but I love seeing a bigger full-size palette from them. And the other palette that I reviewed on May 17th was the palette that I never thought I was going to get to review, the Shroud It's Freakin' Bats palette. That's the palette that took seven months to get to me. And I talk a lot about the sort of pain and pleasure of ordering from indie brands and how I hope that they learn from this and I hope that other indie brands learn from this sort of catastrophe because I can't imagine that that's good for them. I'm sure they're making a ton of money on that shroud, It's Freakin' Bats, which was a collab with Butte Bean, but they basically had to shut down their business and just make those palettes for like seven months. So even if you made a ton of money at that launch, you better be good at budgeting. They weren't bringing in any new orders after that point. They had to shut the site down and just make those palettes and ship them out for like seven months. So I don't want to rag on indie brands. I get it that sometimes you're at a certain size and maybe you do a collab or maybe you have a product that for whatever reason just gets hyped up. And like a brand can't help how many people come to their website. They have X number of units. If three times that many people come to buy it, you're gonna have disappointed people. That's not the brand's fault. It's just the way of the world. They can't control who's talking about it on Instagram, who's bringing it up on YouTube, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not gonna hate on that, but I hope it's something that indie brands learn from in terms of thinking about how to handle these releases in the future. This video is gonna be long. Yeah, you talk too much. Somebody's a Gabby.
Gabby math. Gabby Gabby. On May 24th, I did kind of a retro review where I looked at the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde as well as the Pastel Obsession Mini Palettes. Um, they were fine. There was nothing super special about them. I actually love those Pastel Mini Palettes with the Mercury Retrograde. I think they all work together and you can get some really bumped up fun pastel. I think that the Mercury Retrograde has a couple of deeper shades that will help you work with the pastel palettes. So I love all of those as a little grouping, but it was just, it was kind of old palettes, but I had them and I was like, you know what? I think they're beautiful. I want to talk about them. It wasn't anything special. What was super special on that day was two palettes from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. So I finally picked up the Juicy Olive palette, which is fine. It's greens. It's beautiful. It's a little bit more yellow swampy green. I prefer more blue toned emeraldy kind of greens, but it's still, it was green. It was beautiful. It was swampy realness. I loved it. But the Pastel Dreams... Oh, it was so beautiful. It was so wonderful. I absolutely love that palette. It was a pastel rainbow where you got 12 shades and in each of the six colors of the kind of traditional rainbow, you got a pastel version in a matte and a shimmer. It was perfection. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Now we had five Mondays in May. So on May 31st, I started with a little trip to the drugstore. We did a review of some LA Girl palettes. So there were a couple of Desert Dreams palettes, um, the VIP and like the Backstage Pass or something. I can't remember exactly what they were called. They were fine. They were little $16 drugstore palettes. They arrived broken and I had to keep reordering them from Ulta. And of course it was something that Ulta didn't carry in the store. So you could only get it online and they packaged it for shit and it always arrived broken. It was so frustrating, but the colors were beautiful. The shimmers were beautiful. For a $16 palette, it was fine. And then there were these holographic glosses, not holographic. That anything in the drugstore that calls itself holographic is almost always going to be iridescent. And that's what these were. They were really beautiful, but iridescent, not holographic glosses. So they were a lot of fun. It was a fun trip to the drugstore. I don't do a ton of drugstore makeup reviews, so it was nice to mix it up and give you a little something different for a change. And we ended out the month with more products from Menagerie Cosmetics. They released their collab palette with Annette's makeup corner called the Serenity Palette. Now I'm gonna link up my 2021 makeup predictions up here in the corner. This is one thing that I did say was gonna happen more in 2021 and they're proving me right, which is there have been a lot of really fun collabs between smaller YouTubers and like indie brands. So I'm excited to get to the end of the year and talk about that because there have been some great ones. And the Serenity palette from Menagerie Cosmetics is absolutely one of them. I did also order the liquid lipstick called Churro, which is named after Annette's cat. That's fine. I love the Menagerie liquid lipstick formula. So it was great, but the palette was the real standout. Some really beautiful, beautiful colors. If you were kind of interested in like the Natasha Denona Circo Loco palette, but she didn't want to pay that price. Serenity, it's not an exact dupe. It's not an exact copy of the color story, but it's got similar vibes and it's much, much cheaper. So definitely check that out. Now for May, my worst product of the month, I'm sorry to say it, Menagerie Cosmetics. I've been loving your eyeshadows, but that Arthurine blush palette, it might be named after bears, but it was a dog. It just wasn't great. It was hard to work with. It was hard to blend. I got hard pan in a blush. I don't even know how that happens. It was so weird. It just did not work. I did not love the Arthurine palette. That, I'm so sorry to say it. I hate to shit on indie brands, but that was my worst product for May. Now, my best products for May. In the number three spot, the Made by Mitchell Feet on the Ground palette. That was absolutely beautiful. The greens in that are stunning. The pop of like blood orange and the purples and the teal, so good. I would absolutely try another palette from him. I may have to get that Head in the Clouds palette as well that's got some more pastel kind of things. Oh, I loved it. So that was in my number three spot. In my number two spot, the Serenity. I loved the Flight Club, that purple palette. The reason why I picked Serenity over that is just because of the wider range of colors. There was greens and yellow and orange and blue. And so you could get a wider range. I thought the Flight Club was beautiful, but you really have to be ready for purple or use it with other palettes. Um, Cause you kind of just get 
these range of purple looks. And I love purple, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love it. But I just loved the versatility in the Serenity, and the quality was just as good. And in my number one spot for May, no surprise, the Pastel Dreams palette from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. That was absolutely stunning. I am so jealous that I did not get the pastel bundle that they did, because I've seen comparisons and I love the pastel dreams, but I can see that I would have loved that pastel bundle just as much if not more. And I would have loved to have them both together to really create some interesting pastel ombres. Pastel dreams, 100% my top product for May. Now June was Pride and I decided to just focus on some of my favorite things. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Copyright strike. So for June 7th, the things that I loved, my favorite things that I wanted to celebrate for Pride were Golden Girls and Glitter. So I reviewed the Peachy Queen Thank You for Being a Friend, loosely inspired by the Golden Girls palette. It's a nine pan pastel brights palette and it is absolutely gorgeous. I love it for a pastel palette and from Peachy Queen that can be a little bit hit or miss. I thought it was really great. I was really impressed with the quality. So I love Golden Girls. I love the inspiration that they took. I feel the way that they did it was so like spot on with the mood of Golden Girls. Absolutely love it. And for glitter, I had some fabulous new glitter gel space paste liner, highlighter type things from Lemonhead LA. And I decided to get their rainbow like highlighter bundle. So these are glitters that aren't as much about having the base pigment and being like a metallic shine, but are much more of like an iridescent. And there was even one that's kind of a duochrome, multi-chrome, where it's more of like a sheer. And then as you move and turn, it gives you a beautiful highlight. So I ordered six shades. There was a little six pack of shades, including their newest duochrome one, and they were absolutely lovely. I love Golden Girls, I love glitter. That was a great day. Then for June 14th, we did some more of my favorite things. We did Barbie, which clearly I'm inspired by Barbie. And also my favorite color, which is green. So for Barbie, I reviewed the ColourPop X Barbie collection. And there have been some Barbie collections that are a little bit sus. I'm looking at you, Pure. But I feel like ColourPop really got it right. I think the eyeshadow palette was such iconic, like, 70s, 80s Barbie colors. Mostly 80s, but it had that, like, perfect Malibu Barbie blue. So good. And just the iconography. It just reminded me of a coloring book from the 80s that I had that was Barbie. It was so perfect. The highlighter was golden and beaming. It was all colors that you could imagine Barbie wearing, that you would pick up like an 80s Barbie in the store, and that would be her look. It was so beautiful. There were lip kits. There was a little mirror. I just loved it. The packaging, the products, so good. And for greens, I finally got in my Cleona order of various multi-chromes. I decided to just go and order a bunch of greens. I looked through what they had in stock. I didn't want to have to wait for a restock or any of that kind of shenanigans. I just looked at what was in stock and just picked four beautiful greens. Now Cleona was on my list of products that I wanted to try in 2021. I'll go ahead and link that video up here in the cards if you want to check that out. Um, and I have a companion video that might already be out, and if not, it's coming out soon. But I love it. I love these Cleona Multichromes. Now, are they absolutely necessary? Absolutely not. They are a beautiful luxury if you can afford it, if it makes sense with your life. Absolutely pick up a couple. Pick out your favorite shades and just get some things to really treat yourself. Um, but if you are feeling like you can't afford it, don't feel like you're missing out. There are other brands at other price points that are doing just as well. But if you can afford it and if it makes sense in your life, they are beautiful. It's a beautiful little treat for yourself. For June 21st, I wanted to have a little bit of a focus on a black owned makeup brand. And I also wanted to talk about some more ColourPop products. And these were the ColourPop products in the Make It Black initiative. So after George Floyd and when Black Lives Matter was really um, having a big cultural moment in summer of 2020, there was an initiative started by Sharon Shooter um, from Oma Beauty. Uh, she had the pull up for change where she was challenging cosmetics companies 
to reveal what percentage of their executive level employees, higher level employees, are black or people of color, and to really commit to making change in the industry. Um, and it was a fantastic movement. And something that went along with that is then they started this um, Make It Black project. And that was something where companies put out, most of them put out products that they already had in new black packaging. And if you bought the new black packaging, um, a portion of the proceeds would be donated to this project that was meant to help fund black entrepreneurs. Now ColourPop, because of the way that they manufacture, all of their manufacturing is in-house, they can really turn around very quickly and make new products and make new packaging. So they actually released brand new products. So I thought that was pretty impressive. I think that, you know, it's great that all of these brands participated, even if they were just putting products they already had in new packaging. But I thought it was great that ColourPop took the effort, especially with a lot of the criticism that they've faced about not being super inclusive. And they created a whole new mini line of products that included a five pan eyeshadow palette, two Super Shock shadows, a couple Super Shock blushes, and some lipsticks that you could get and it would donate proceeds. So I picked up several of the products from that line and talked about it on that Makeup Monday. For an actual black owned makeup brand, I also talked about the red collection from Prapa Beauty. So Prapa Beauty is fairly new. They kind of took the small indie YouTube creators by storm with their nude lipsticks. And then they came out with some reds. These had been out for a while, but I decided to buy them and review them. Now, I don't love the Prapa formula because for me, it's kind of one of those lipsticks that's between a lipstick and a gloss. And so it's really glossy. It's really slick. It's almost semi-sheer. You get a good pigment, but it's definitely a little bit sheer and slick. I'm looking for something that's much more like matte, paint it down, it's gotta stay there. I mean, I always end up with lipstick on my teeth. A slick, glossy lipstick is gonna be on my teeth forever. So I didn't necessarily love the formula, but I'm excited to see what else they do. I hope they come out with new formulations and the reds, the shades of the reds, beautiful. Now on June 28th, some of my favorite things that we talked about, I also, I don't talk about it a lot on this channel, but I have a little bit of a woo-woo side. I have been reading tarot cards for more than 20 years, and I have a whole kind of spiritual side that is separate from my drag persona, but I was really excited when I saw that Peachy Queen had the Align Your Chakras palette. I thought that was a fun way to do a rainbow palette, so I picked that up and reviewed it. I thought it was fine. I didn't think it was one of the better releases from Peachy Queen. It wasn't terrible, but it was just kind of an odd choice for some of the shades, and um, it was fine. It wasn't great. It wasn't terrible. It was fine. I also picked up some monster products from the Collective Cosmetics. Now, I have been buying and reviewing the Collective Cosmetics subscription box since January. I'm doing a whole year. I'm planning a video where I talk about the difference between the Collective subscription and the Deck of Scarlet subscription, so be on the lookout for that. I've mentioned it before. I promise it's coming. Um, but I decided to just go ahead and order from their regular line, and I picked up some of their monster collection. So I picked up the Frankenstein monster collection, I picked up the whole collection, the fire and brimstone, the devil collection, I picked up all of that. Those were kind of the greens and the reds. And then I also picked up the highlighter from the werewolf collection and the vampire collection. So I got all four of the highlighters, and then I also got the lip products and the shadows from the Devil Collection and the Frankenstein Monster. So they were pretty good. I like the Collective Cosmetics. I've talked about them a lot. I've reviewed um, almost all of their subscription boxes. I'm a little behind as I am with everything, but I generally like them. I think they're great. And um, I enjoyed their monsters. I thought it was a lot of fun. Now for the worst product of the month, it's kind of the worst of the best. It just underwhelmed me. It wasn't terrible, but it was just like, meh. And that's the Peachy Queen Align Your Chakras palette. It was just a rainbow palette, and some of the things that they chose for, like, blue versus indigo were kind of weird choices. It was almost like the blue was darker than indigo, which is not how colors work. It was just kind of strange choices. So I didn't love that one. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. It was just, if I look at the, like the high quality of the stuff that I reviewed in June, it was the worst of the best. 
In my number three spot are the Cleona Greens, those four green multichromes. They are absolutely beautiful. They are absolutely stunning. The reason why they're only in the number three spot is just that price point. They're a beautiful luxury. Like I said, if it makes sense for you and your budget and your life, then treat yourself, girl. But it's not a necessity. It's just not at that price. And so I am glad that I tried it. I will certainly probably try more. I don't know how many more, but I'm willing to try more, but it just, it couldn't get past the three spot just because of those prices. In the number two, glitter. I love glitter. The Lemonhead LA glitter gels. I love their Space Paste Glitter Gels. They are phenomenal. I love working with them. I still love my loose glitters from Trixie Cosmetics and Lit Cosmetics. I'm a lit girl. I absolutely love them, but those glitter gels are so easy to work with. And even putting down like some glitter gel from Lemon Hell Light and tapping a lit glitter into it, stunning. And at my number one spot for June, the highlighters from the Collective Cosmetics Monster Collections. The shadows were fine. The shadows... They're, I've talked about this in reviews before. Their shadow formula is a little bit drier. Um, it's a little bit, I don't want to say difficult to work with. I think you get really beautiful, interesting color. And the way that they blend their colors, it can look kind of plain in the pan. And then you start working with it. And these like unexpected colors just emerge. It's beautiful. But they're not super beginner friendly. But their highlighters are always stunning. If you aren't sure where to start with Collective Cosmetics and you love an intense highlighter glow, try some of their highlighters. I absolutely love them. And that is the number one spot for June. Happy Pride, several months late. Now let's move on to July and talk about the things that I reviewed in July of 2021. We had two reviews on July 5th. The first one were the new orange lip products from Trixie Cosmetics. They released an orange lipstick called Model Actress and an orange gloss called... Fuck, what was it called? And an orange gloss whose name I can't remember, so I'll try to put it on the screen because it's in a drawer and I don't want to have to dig for it. This is the quality you came for, folks. I love the Trixie lip products. I... Love that she's putting out a lot of glosses. The glosses are great quality. Where are the lipsticks? Where is Bobble? And where are the liquid lipsticks? As a drag queen, I am surprised that Trixie is not giving us liquid lipsticks. Because I can't believe that she doesn't love a good liquid lipstick from time to time. If she's got like a 13 hour day, why you want to have to fuck with a gloss? Why you want to have to reapply that every couple hours? Why you want to fuck with a lipstick? What are you doing, girl? Are you okay? Do you need someone to check on you? Do we need to have a welfare check? What's happening? Now, because this is the mega, mega, mega mini review roundup, I didn't grab all of the products. I'm going to try to put pictures on the screen. I didn't grab a lot of them. But the other thing I reviewed on July 5th, I had to pull that out. And that is the Lethal is Dead palette. I love Teresa is Dead. We are such a Teresa is Dead stand around here. I love the quality of Lethal makeup. Their eyeshadow palettes are phenomenal. And this collab, oh, I just love it so much. Now, I'm going to go ahead and link it in the cards, my predictions video. Because I did mention that there were going to be lots of collabs in 2021, and I specifically called out Teresa's Dead. So, I'm not saying I'm one of LaToya Jackson's psychic friends, but I'm saying check the tapes, bitch. This is a beautiful collection. It's a little bit more muted for my big drag queen face. It can be a little bit muted, and so for some of this I might bring in some other shades, but I love this. I think this color story is interesting. I think it's unique. I think it's got that ooky spooky vibe that Teresa's Dead is always going for. I love it. I am so excited about this. Don't be surprised if you see this a little later on in the video. I love it. Now on July 12th, we had a couple of indie brands. We started with the Copacetic Cosmetics Companion Palette, which is another collab palette. And that one is really beautiful. I liked it. Now, I don't understand why they do so many flakies when their non-flaky shimmers are beautiful. The non-flaky shimmers in that palette are absolutely gorgeous. So if you can do shimmers that good, 
why are you fucking around with this like flaky weird do them as their own separate thing so if people just want them they can get them oh i just was so kind of disappointed because those flakies for me were so hard to work with but the colors were beautiful there were beautiful undertones and duochromes and lots of beautiful green moments which we know i love so I was pretty impressed with that. It's just that the flakies for me are really hard to work with. The other indie brand palette that we reviewed, this is from a brand that I've reviewed for a long time. We know I stand them. That is Glam Light. I picked up their Red Velvet Cupcake palette. I found it to be the same good quality that Glam Light always has. It's a red, pink, purple, berry color story. It's very much like the Natasha Denona Love palette, like so many of those other pinky purple color stories that we've seen before so is it anything groundbreaking in terms of the colors no like that felt a little bit like mm, already done but if you haven't picked up one of those palettes yet and you've been thinking about it and you've been like toying your options the cupcake palette is beautiful the shimmers are stunning the mattes are really great quality so absolutely if you haven't gotten one of those pink purple berry palettes that's a great option for you it's beautiful there's beautiful options in there, and I love Glam Light's formula. I love their food theme. I think it's so much fun. For July 19th, which came out a little bit late, um, I actually backdated them back to the 19th, but I was just trying to play catch up, and so I actually reviewed the Collective Cosmetics the subscription boxes were June and July on that day. I hadn't gotten to the June box yet, and I had gotten in the July box. I was like, you know what? Let's just have this day be the Collective Cosmetics Day. And so I reviewed both of them. I have been loving the Collective Cosmetics Decadence box. I think it's a lot of fun. I've talked a lot about how I feel about their formula, that I don't think it's necessarily super beginner friendly but if you don't mind working with it and if you're experienced with a drier formula you might just love it out the gate but if you're used to like a creamier more emollient it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to but some of the colors that they have are colors that you have never seen like the way that they're blended together is so interesting and so fun and it's just phenomenal it's wonderful so it's worth the extra effort a hundred percent then the last Makeup Monday in July, July 26th, I talked about the Pat McGrath blushes. Who even is this bitch? I don't know what's going on. Suddenly I think I'm bougie and I'm buying Pat McGrath all over the place, but I decided to try three of her blushes and they're so good. They're so good. I feel bad about it. I feel weird, but they are so good. I just... Do you need them? No. Are there other blushes that are just as good? Yes. The blushes, they're not a necessity, but if blush is like a pleasure product for you, if it's one of those things that you just love playing with, even though I'm not very good at it, I love playing with it, I love those Pat McGrath blushes. They are so, so beautiful and silky. Oh my God, they're just silky, like super expensive French lingerie, but like for your cheek, not your butt cheek, face cheek. Then the other brand that I reviewed on July 26th is Wicked Sisters Cosmetics. I already got in some of the new products for my new brands that I want to try through the end of 2021. And I tried out the Wanna Play palette and the House of Horrors palette. Now, I had some good things and some bad things to say. I didn't think it was a perfect brand. I didn't think it was terrible. I love their fun, spooky, spooky, creepy horror movie, not officially licensed kind of vibe. I think it's fun. And I thought the palettes were solid, not like absolute home run hitters, but they were solid. They were dependable. Now for the worst product of July 2021, I'm sorry, I have to give it to the companion palette from Copacetic Cosmetics. Not because it was bad, because let me tell you, those non-flaky shimmers, beautiful. I can't even tell you how beautiful. Like beyond what you would think from just like a normal shimmer, they were so stunning. But there were so many flakies in that palette and I just have a hard time. If you have any tips or tricks, please, please leave them in the comments below because I want to love that palette. And I have a flaky bundle that I bought at the same time that I'm really worried about how I'm going to use it. I haven't had a chance to review it yet. So 
to help me with the review, let me know down in the comments how you use those flakies and how you make them work because that's why it's not that it's bad, it's just that I had trouble working with that formula in particular. Now for my top three. In the number three spot, the Trixie Cosmetics Model Actress Lipstick. The orange lipstick. It is bananas. It is so orange. So maybe oranges, not bananas. Doesn't matter. I love that lipstick formula. That orange color is so fun and interesting and playful. I want to know why Trixie is not doing more lipsticks. Why is she not doing lipsticks? Why is she not doing liquid lipsticks? Get on it, Trixie. I'm going to harp on Bobble until it's restocked. I promise you, every video I make where I mention Trixie Cosmetics, I will find a way to work it in that she has not restocked Bobble. So just... Give in to my demands and restock it so that I can have Bobble because it just is all I need in my life. But Model Actress is good too. In the number two spot, the Pat McGrath blushes. Again, do you need them? No. If you're not really into blush, is it worth spending the money? No. But if you like blush and if blush is part of your routine that like makes you excited and makes you feel creative. They are so silky and beautiful. And you can get like, they're kind of expensive, but that's one of those things from Pat McGrath that I don't think is that super expensive compared to other brands. Cause I think the blushes individually, I bought a trio for like $96. I think they're normally $39. That's not much different than a NARS blush or a Too Faced blush. So in terms of like comparing eyeshadows to those brands versus these blushes, they're actually not that much more expensive than other like not prestige luxury brands, but just these more like middle of the road prestige brands. And so are they necessary? No, but are they wonderful? Are they an absolute treat? Yes. So they're in my number two spot. And you can call me a performing monkey, a shill, whatever you want to call me. I don't give a shit. My number one for this month, the Lethal is Dead collab palette between Lethal Cosmetics and Teresa is Dead. This absolutely had to be my number one. I was so excited when I heard about this. I It took a little while to ship and it like, I just was waiting with like bated breath. I love this palette. I love it so much. And yes, I would have ordered it no matter what because it's a Teresa is Dead collab palette. But looking at these, like this creature feature, this beautiful green, that cool tone green, I absolutely love this dark blue, this like yellow shimmer that's got kind of greenish undertones, this swampy acid green. Oh, it's so good. This like peachy gold shimmer. So beautiful. So beautiful. I absolutely had to give the number one product for July. Is that where we are? I absolutely had to give the number one product for July 2021 to Lethal is Dead. So good. Don't be surprised if you see that show up on my year-end countdown. And I won't apologize for it then either, bitch. Now in August, I had some big projects at work and so I did not have reviews. August is the first time, now those collective boxes that I talked about earlier, those got published late and I just backdated them to the date. But if you've noticed from my review roundups, every month until August, I had two reviews up every Monday for the entire year. So I feel like that deserves a little bit of acknowledgement because that's a lot of swatching and playing and reviewing and writing and photographing and it's a lot. I'm a one queen operation, I'm doing all this shit. So not to toot my own horn, but beep beep, bitch. Um, so in August, I only had two Mondays where I got reviews done. On August 2nd, August 23rd, and August 30th, there were no reviews. I just didn't have it in me, I'm sorry. So we don't have as many products to talk about, but there are some good products and maybe some problematic products. So on August 9th, the first review that came out was the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Star Ranch Palette that came out in the mystery boxes, as well as the two mystery box exclusive liquid lipstick shades. So I didn't review all the products. I didn't review anything that was a pre-release or anything like that. I just had those two exclusive liquid lipsticks and I thought they went nicely with the little palette or whatever. And so I just reviewed them. Now I said in my unboxing video where I opened up those mystery boxes that I thought the Star Ranch palette was gonna be part of a collection with like the Wyoming palette. I thought there was gonna be a bigger palette because typically anytime there's a mini palette, it goes with something else. 
So I'll go ahead and link that unboxing video up here if you haven't seen it. It's a lot of fun. I didn't get a pink ticket, spoiler alert, but it was still fun to see what I got. But it turns out that it was released with nothing. So that release happened, um, as we're filming this, it was just the last Friday, and they just released the Star Ranch palette with two new Yak Head mirrors and a Yak plush. That was the collection. I seriously thought that those like lip balms were gonna be part of the launch. I thought there was gonna be a big palette to go along with the mini palette. Nope, nope. Just that same fucking mini palette that we've all seen, a plush yak and two yak head mirrors. Miss Star has been having a time. She just cannot keep up the momentum that she used to have. Some of these launches, I'm just like, girl, what are you doing? What's going on? Also on August 9th, I had the ColourPop. I don't know why there's been so much ColourPop lately. I just have been in that kind of mood. They put out so many collections. Some of them had to eventually draw me in. And so I kept seeing people talk about the Lush Life palette and it is beautiful and it's a little bit deeper. It's a little bit more verdant and green and blue and orange. And so I decided to go ahead and pick it up as well as one of the Lux glosses in the shade Vonda, which is kind of a, a sheer bright orange with some gold pearl. And it was a lot of fun. So I played around with that and it's beautiful. It's lovely. It's a ColourPop palette. I'm gonna try to play around with it and get some more use out of it. But that's the thing about ColourPop is that even if you're, I'm drawn in by the collection, there's something about it that feels so disposable to me. And so it's, it's, it's tough for a ColourPop product to come into my collection and maintain my attention. The Barbie products are probably gonna be around for a while, but this Lush Life, it's beautiful, but is it just gonna get swallowed by all the other greens? It's so pretty. It's so pretty, but it just, I'm like, eh, I don't know. Then on August 16th, we had just a full on problematic day. So the first review was the Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics blush collection. So I reviewed a little bit of everything. I reviewed a couple of her like loose blushes that have the like highlight powder in them, a couple of the blush cream to powder sticks, both of the pressed blush palettes, and one of the lip cushions, as well as three of the liquid lipsticks from a previous launch. So we did a whole lot of Jaclyn Hill. I was excited to play around with it, and I have to say, I'm excited for what Jaclyn Cosmetics does in the future. I think that that Bougie Rouge collection nailed it. <coughs> nailed it. I think they did so good. I think the packaging is on point. There's a couple kind of weird things that are just like odd choices or whatever, but I think that what she's doing is phenomenal. I think that sometimes she doesn't think things through, like with her bronzer launch, where she only launched these very mid-tone, and then she's like, well, those are just the limited edition ones. There's going to be a full skin tone range in the full bronzer range. Well, then bring out the full bronzer range first, and then give us a limited edition extension that just has some additional shades. You still probably would get some side eye for not having more inclusivity in that limited edition range, but if you had released the full range that was gonna be more inclusive first, I think you would have gotten less flack for that, ma'am. And then the other review that we had was the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Pink Religion Collection. And I have not been super excited by Jeffree Star Cosmetics as a brand, for a long time. The last time that I was really excited was the Blood Money Collection. I'll go ahead and link one of my videos about the Blood Money Collection up here. I love that because we know that I love green, but I also love pink. And this Pink Religion palette, it did all the things I needed it to do. It had weird, interesting, fun, intricate, really well done packaging. The shades are beautiful. It's a little bit too matte for my liking. I would have liked a few more shimmers, but it's what I'm wearing today. I'm actually wearing the Pink Religion Eye Shadow Palette as my eye look today. It's all, all of the shades, including the brows, are from that palette, and I absolutely loved it. I also really loved the highlighter palette, the Sacred Glass. Those extreme frosts that he does, I think, are beautiful. And I loved having that like smaller format where you could get three of them 
for $62. And then of course I bought the bundle with the two palettes together. So basically it was $50 each. So normally a single of those Extreme Frost is $50. And in this one, I got the three individual shades basically for $50 because it was $99 for the Pink Religion and for the Sacred Glass. So I absolutely loved it. The lipsticks were fine. I did order all of the lipsticks. Um, I thought that they were fine. They're lipsticks. I prefer liquid lipstick formulas, but I thought the colors were nice. They were beautiful. I'm wearing one of them, I think, on my lips today. I think I've, I think I put down a liquid lipstick and then layered Cult of Roses over it. So wearing a little bit of it today. And I am a shameless whore for the mirrors, and they had a new mirror design. This beautiful iridescent stained glass. So good. It's so good. Why can't I stop myself? And that's all that I reviewed in August. I'm sorry. The, the reason why I couldn't film was the same bunch of reasons why um, this video is so long and it's reviewing all these different things. I just had a lot going on. A lot of things made it so I couldn't film and I didn't get a lot of reviews done. So sorry about it. But we are going to talk about my least favorite and my favorite products from August. All right. So let's talk about the worst product. Because I reviewed so few products, there really isn't a worst product of the month. I'm going to have to say the Lux Gloss from ColourPop just because sheer glosses don't do it for me. That's not what I need. I need color. I need coverage. It's fun to play with a gloss and I think over other lip products, um, especially for photos or something where I'm not having to talk a lot, I think a gloss can be beautiful and I am excited to use that one. But because there's so few products and we have to have a worst, it's another one of those worst of the best kind of things because I didn't hate that formula. It's not sticky. It's not gross. Um, it just was, of all the products that I had in this small selection, that was the one that worked for me the least. Uh, in my number three spot, I am going to have to give it to the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Sacred Glass Highlighter Palette. I love that formula. I love, I've got kind of all three shades from that palette on my face today. I love it. I love the Extreme Frost formula. I love to mix it with other highlighters. It is kind of a glittery, fun sort of color. And I just used those highlighters today, kind of mixed together. The reason why it's in the number three spot instead of the number two spot is just because the two lighter shades, Pearly Gates and um, Glass Supper, I think it's called, they're a little bit too similar. They're not the same, but they're a little bit too similar. I would have liked something with a little bit of a different kind of flip to it or something to really differentiate it from the other, but they are beautiful. I love them. And so that one is in the number three spot. In the number two spot, absolutely the Jaclyn Hill blush palettes. I have to say that the like Rouge Affair, the cool tone one is probably my favorite just because I tend to go for more cool toned, pinky colors. I am a cool toned pink beast. And so I love pinkish tones, peachy tones. The warm one is beautiful too, but it's got like red and orange blush. So like Trixie Cosmetics with the Mod About You palette, they said that they were doing orange blush, but they did like a hot coral and like a peach blush. In the Jaclyn Hill palette, you have a fucking Valencia orange blush. Like it is orange juice orange. It's fun. It's playful. I do like the Rouge Affair, the pinky cooler tone one better, but I love both of them. I think the powders are beautiful. They're easy to work with. They do have a really lovely kind of satin matte finish that's not too matte. It's not too aggressive. It like really kind of softens and it's really beautiful. And my number one product for August of 2021 is the Pink Religion palette. I love pinks. And let me tell you, I have not been this excited about a Jeffree Star Cosmetics release since Blood Money. And I know people feel all kinds of ways about him. I've talked about him in multiple videos. And if you want to have a discussion in a, an adult grown up manner, I am happy to have that discussion because I promise you it's not just me not knowing anything or not being aware of anything, but really struggling with and wrestling with how I feel about him as a person, his brand, all of these different things. And I maybe just came to a different conclusion than you. And that's fine. We don't have to all feel the same way. I feel like there's no evidence that when I spend the money at his brand, that any of that money is going to go to harm anyone. 
And that's what's important to me when I'm thinking about conscious consumerism. So if we want to have a longer discussion elsewhere, I welcome, I welcome that. Bring it to the comments, whatever you want to say, we'll talk about it. Um, but again, if somebody's just an asshole to me, I will block you. People say, oh, you're silencing people or whatever. N people who are acting like assholes deserve to be silenced. So I'm just going to put that out there. If you want to have a grown up conversation, I'm in my fucking 40s. I'm not here to argue with teenage trolls on the internet who don't know how to use grown up words. Sorry about it. But my number one is the pink religion. I love this collection of pinks. I think it's beautiful. I actually want to use it with the blood money palette. I love pink and green together. And I want to do like a weird sort of 60s inspired green and pink look. And I am so excited for that floral fantasy. And that is it. That is the mega, mega, mega mini review roundup for all four of those months. I'm going to try to keep up with it a little better than I have. I can't promise anything. You may get dual months. We'll have to see. But I am going to try to commit. If I, I haven't been reviewing things as much, so it may actually be a lot easier to do in the future. Sorry that this video took forever. But let me know down below what you thought about this video. Would you have preferred that I still did the four individual months? Did you like having all four together so you could just get a trip down makeup memory lane? Um, is there some way that you would have split it up different? Would you rather I just do like, you know, maybe a top five and a bottom five of all the products from those months? Let me know your thoughts down below of what you'd like to see, because chances are it may happen again. While you're down there, don't forget to give me a thumbs up or you can give me a thumbs down. I don't really care. It's engagement either way. The algorithm isn't a picky bitch and neither am I. Check my grinder. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of all future uploads. I really try hard to get one video out a week. We know that I've been slipping lately, but I really do try. And some weeks I even have a bonus video for you. Ooh, unlikely. If you'd like to chat, banter, or commiserate between uploads, all of my social media will be linked down in the description box below, including a link to my website, The World of Champagne at JanessaJ.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy these review roundups. I love going back and reminiscing about all of these beautiful products that I tried and reviewed and thinking about them, see if my feelings have changed at all. And until I see you again, bye. Thank you.